Hi, my name is Pam McLean, and I'm pleased to join Groundbreak 2020 and spend a bit of time with you today. I lead one of the longest standing coaching organizations in the US and the Hudson Institute of Coaching has been partnering with Procore for the past three years to help them build elements of their coaching culture that grows people and impacts the bottom line. I'm a master coach as well as an organizational psychologist. And over the years, I've surely seen the power of equipping leaders and managers with some coaching skills that enhance how you lead and manage others. In our time together today, I'm going to offer you three coaching tools that you can incorporate into your work as a leader or manager on a daily basis. Coaching tools that I know have been proven to make a big difference in the work that you do. I'm also going to invite you on occasion to pick up a pen and, and jot down some thoughts uh, as I ask you to reflect on a couple of things. And of course, it's my hope that you will leave here able to bring some of these coaching essentials into the work that you do immediately. As I was deciding on which three tools to bring to you today, I reached out to a nephew of mine in the commercial construction industry to see if there are some nuances about leadership unique in your work uh, that I should be aware of as I prepared. He had just finished heading up a sports arena project that turned out to be one of the largest sports arena uh, structures in the country. So it was a perfect time for us to sit down and, and have a long conversation. I asked him to tell me about his lessons over the last 20 some years, his failures and, and what he's learned along the way. And the very first thing he said to me stuck with me. He said, you know, it took me a while as a leader to understand I'm not building buildings, I'm building people. I'm not building buildings, I'm building people. And when I asked him a little bit more about some lessons that he's learned and, 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 and what he has experienced over the course of these 20 some years, he said that one of the biggest transitions he made and the toughest challenges he had was shifting from doer to developer of others. Talk, and he talked about how you know, it was so easy to get in the weeds, so tempting to get in the weeds and, and how it took a lot of intentional attention to stay out of that and really get focused on the work that he had to do as a leader. And, and then he told me that as he looks back on his leadership journey, that one of the things he kind of chuckles about now is that early on, he wanted everybody to be just like him. He thought, you know, look, I give it 115%. I work longer than the day and I take work home. And I thought everybody else should too. And, and that now he understands that it would not be a good thing to have a team that looks and feels and thinks just like you. And that actually the power of creating a diverse team with uh, diverse perspectives and backgrounds is what makes great synergy in a team. I, uh, I also uh, asked him if he had any mentors along the way and any coaching experiences. And he talked about how mentors have really made a difference and, and that oftentimes he's not sure that they even know that they were mentoring him, but, but that along the way, uh, they've helped him see things that were invisible outside of his awareness and had a meaningful impact. And, and then he said some things about how he thought that for himself and, and perhaps for many who go into this industry, that, that learning how to communicate well with others is not something that is natural. And, and that in his organization, they have valued coaching as a tool for development and it really has helped him over time uh, learn some of the skills that have been so critical. And, and that for him, at least on several occasions, coaching has been a game changer. 
So what I learned in this conversation goes something like this. You know your industry. You know how to tackle a project big and small. Most of them I know are very big. You know how to get it from the, from the start to the finish line and, and all of the best practices that are involved in completing a project. And, and most of you have progressed through the pipeline, perhaps a little like my nephew, starting at the very bottom rung and working up through uh, his organization over a period of time. And yet what is most challenging for you as managers and leaders is the very same thing that challenges leaders in any industry. And that is working well with people, uh, developing the human skills that allow you to lead well and grow your people. What is germane for you as a leader and as a manager is germane for leaders and managers across all industries. So I wanna connect some dots between coaching and leadership as, as we move forward. At, at Hudson, we've spent over 30 years working with leaders who want to add some coaching skills to their toolkit. And, and what we have seen reliably is that when this happens, the leader is not only uh, uh, better at leading their people and developing their people, but others want to follow these leaders who have some of these skills. Much has changed in leadership and the style of leadership that we use in organizations over the last many years. And, and while this is still evolving, there is certainly this sense that the older style of leadership that was top down, a lot of telling and directing and demanding, kind of transactional based on roles and rules, uh, is a kind of leadership, maybe these phrases will sound familiar to you, that goes something like this, I make the rules, you follow them. Or if you mess up, I'll let you know. Or better yet, if you don't hear from me, you know all is fine. And, and in the world that we're living in today, that sort of leadership is dramatically changing. With all of the rapid changes we have in technology, in society, never mind the pandemic that we're living in right now, instead of hierarchies, we have networks in our organizations. And instead of top down, we, have, we are all directions. And instead of command and control, leaders today are increasingly focused on developing their people and serving others. And the list just keeps going. We are living in a time that requires a new kind of leadership, a kind of leadership that is focused on asking more to understand and to learn, developing others in, in everyday conversations not just left to the once a year performance review, inspiring greatness in others and, and engaging them and, and committing ourselves to long-term learning and development across our organizations. So let's explore these three coaching skills that I'm going to uh, uh, share with you and see if you can add these to your toolkit and, and allow yourself to be just a little bit stronger in your role. And I'm gonna start by saying something that might, might sound odd, but it is this, who you are is how you lead. Who you are is how you lead. That means that what makes you tick, your internal landscape, or perhaps for you, your internal blueprint, runs how you show up in every conversation every day. So let's take a look at some of the dimensions of this landscape and small ways that you might bring these coaching skills into your work as a leader. The first area is presence. It is a particularly important area that we can so easily overlook. Presence. Your very presence sends a message to your people. The way that you speak your pace, your expression, your people read you before you have uttered a word. So it's pretty important to know the message you're sending. Is it, oh, 
I'm in a hurry, so speak quickly, or, oh, not that again, or I'm worried about what you're bringing up here. Just last week, I had a call that really put a spotlight on this issue of presence, and it was from a longtime friend. I'll call him Robert. Robert called me, feeling somewhere between desperate, discouraged, and upset about what was unfolding at work in the midst of a new promotion that he had been so happy about. He had been promoted from a plant manager to a more senior role in a regional headquarters in the automotive industry. And the transition from plant to regional headquarters turned out to be very, very bumpy. His boss had just had a conversation with him uh, uh, the day prior. It was not the first conversation, that the boss continued to get complaints that Robert was seen as aloof, inaccessible, and some people wondered if he was interested in them. He was stunned by the feedback that he got. And, and as we talked and dug a little deeper into what does aloof and arrogant mean, what we uncovered was pretty simple. When he worked on the plant floor, he could use that old style, the command and control, but it wasn't working in this setting. And he was not doing a good job of connecting with his team. This is all about presence. It seemed his presence sent a message. I'm too busy and I'm not particularly interested. His presence was creating a problem and he needed to adjust it by connecting often showing interest and care and learning from his team. Powerful. So your very presence sends a message to your team. I want you to think about a recent conversation you've had where you could solidly feel the presence of the person you were talking with. That that person was interested, was focused on you, and was interested in what you were saying. How did that happen? What did you observe? And most importantly, how did it change the quality of your conversation? It's great information for us to reflect on that when we notice it. Now consider this for a moment. What do you imagine the message is that you send every day before you utter a word? Does your presence say that I'm in a hurry, talk quickly, or not in the mood right now, or oh no, not that again. Or instead, does your presence, your, even your online presence, communicate a message that says, I'm available, I'm interested, and I care about what you're bringing to this conversation. So know the message, the nonverbal message you are sending. So pull out that sheet of paper and pen right now and take a moment to jot down a few thoughts uh, that come to you as I ask you these questions. If you were to ask members of your team what message your presence sends, what do you think you would hear from them? Maybe just a few words. If you reflect yourself, where do you think you might adjust your way of being, your habits, in order to be even more present to your people? And if you're willing, drop some of your responses in the chat box, along with any questions or thoughts you have, and I'll do my best to respond to these along the way. So coaching tool for the toolkit number one, your presence matters. So know what the messages you are sending even before you utter a word. Coaching skill number two, ask more, tell less. It turns out in this fast paced world of do and tell we live in, few of us find ourselves naturally inclined to ask. Asking takes time and it requires attention. Never mind, our tell muscle is very well developed. It's a default. It is quick, easy, 
and readily avail available to serve us. The refrain of most leaders and managers when I ask them about their tell and ask ratio goes something like this. People expect me to have the answers. Or it takes too much time to ask and coach. So instead I find myself telling my people what to do. Or here's one of my favorites. I've been in this organization for a long time and there is very little I haven't seen. So sharing my perspective seems like the most efficient approach to take. Yet what research tells us is that telling creates almost a boomerang uh, event uh, that, that it leads to repeated telling and the person returning for answers. And so there's this telling that continues to grow and it renders us much less effective in engaging in meaningful coach-like conversations that promote development and grow our people. There's a leadership guru, Jim Collins, who wrote a book, uh, Good to Great, several years ago. And, and in it, he says this, the great leaders in our studies all asked lots of questions. By asking questions, they got the brutal facts. I like that, the brutal facts, as well as a lot of insights and ideas. Collins reminds us that if a leader wants to create a climate of trust, in which truth can be shared and heard, it requires a leader to increase their ask and tell ratio. When a positive challenge for us occurs, asking will get us more information. In fact, when you increase your ask tell ratio, you're doing several things at once. And this is important to notice. You're empowering your people to come up with their own solutions to problems before you jump in with yours. That's development right there in the moment. You're increasing a collaborative environment and that's what people want to work in these days. You're encouraging innovative thinking. You surely know we need that and very likely you're creating all at once the sort of environment where people want to do their best work. Edgar Schein, an OD guru from uh, uh, MIT, puts a bright light on this in his latest book, Humble Inquiry, and he writes this, your subordinates know lots of things that would make the workplace better or safer, that for various reasons they withhold. And if you survey them and ask them, why aren't you telling me what's really going on? Here's what you're going to likely hear. You shoot the messenger. I used to tell you, but you never really seem to have an interest in it. Or I tell you, but it never changes, so I've lost my incentive. The only way to cure this is for you to change that ratio and, and to go to your people and engage in asking more. And if you're saying to yourself, how would I do that? How would I shift gears? Here are some simple asks to consider. What's your perspective? Before I tell you what I went, might do, how about your own thoughts on it? So there again is development in the moment. Before I tell you what I might do, how about your thoughts on this? Have you encountered this problem before? And what did you do then that worked? Uh, or any other ways of approaching this situation. So any of those asks create a development opportunity. So pull out that sheet of paper and, and take a moment uh, to jot down a few words uh, around these two reflections. Do you imagine you could strengthen your role as a leader by increasing your asking and decreasing your telling? And if your answer is yes. Where could you start next week? Where could you start? So two skills, presence, how you show up before you utter a word, and now the asking more and telling less. Third and last, it is thinking systemically. In leadership and teams today, we are learning more and more about the power of thinking and acting systemically. And, and we have lived for uh, 
so long in a world that does not think systemically, but rather thinks individualistically. So what does systemic thinking mean? Understanding that everything is interconnected and everyone has a role they play in everything that happens. Thinking systemically as a leader and as a manager requires a bit of a mind shift because uh, our natural inclination does not tend to lead us there. But here are some tips. Practice seeing systems and not individuals. Notice the difference between seeing your team as a collection of individuals versus your team as a system. Instead of hoping your team can all get along, what if you focused on working to make sure your team is totally behind the intended goal of the moment and all of the parts of systems have what they need to move in the same direction? Two, to think systemically, remember that everything is connected with everything else. There are no discrete actions or outcomes inside a system. Everything is interconnected. That means failures, successes, and learning are all interconnected. If something goes well, everyone has played a role. <clears throat> if something didn't meet the mark or it failed, everyone has a role in that outcome. There is no single cause and no one to blame. This is a tough one for most of us. Often we imagine when something goes wrong in a team, it's because of someone in particular. The active blame is, I don't know, some sort of a self-vindication that seems to absolve us of examining our own role. But this is a key pivot in systems thinking. No one is to blame. Look at the system and ask yourself, what is my role? A good way to start thinking more systemically is asking yourself these three questions every time an issue arises. Number one, what part do I play as a leader or manager in this situation? Two, what does the system need more or less of to operate differently? And three, how can I invite all members of the system to examine their role in the outcome? And when we do all of those, we create a, a, a system that is willing to be accountable themselves and hold one another accountable in the service of what our work is about. So three coaching skills, get present, know your message, the message you're sending before you utter a word, and if you need to, ask others what they see as you walk in a room. Ask more and tell less, Take some time to monitor your ratio. What would it take for you to shift the ratio so that you are asking far more than you're telling? And I guarantee you, you'll be surprised at what you will learn. And third, engage in systems thinking. Everyone plays a role in everything that happens. And finally, as I leave you with these thoughts, I, I do want to uh, uh, encourage you to consider that it is possible to coach yourself. And, and all it takes is four questions. And so you might think about these three areas I've talked about and say, you know, maybe there's one that you want to really uh, uh, shift in a new direction. And, and so the questions are very simple. What is not working as well as you would like it to right now? Or you might say, what could I do that would make things work even better? And what would that look like? And then that number three is the all important question. What is one thing I could change in my role that would have an impact? And then the simple one is to put together a little plan change happens one repetition after another and it takes time. So as I say farewell to you, remember that your work is more about building people and less about building buildings as you progress on the leadership pipeline. And coaching skills, simple coaching skills, can make a very big difference for you as a leader and as a manager. Thank you.